Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Out of respect for your time, we will get started. Um, as always, thank you all so much uh, for giving us a little bit of your time today, attending our final forum in this accreditation series. We think that there's gonna be cause for other informational forums as the fall unfolds and of course, as we finish the process and as the new year starts and we come back for second semester, there will be cause to get back together because we'll be getting information, we'll be getting results. So, and besides that, we're kind of getting used to seeing you all. We're wondering what we're gonna have to do to get everybody to get back into the auditorium when this is all over. Um, we'll think of something. We want to remind you that we're live streaming today throughout the district. So that includes visitors from our two campuses, Hanford and Tulare. So I'm going to remind all of our speakers as they come up to share today that it's really important to hold the microphone right here so that they can hear you. So if you're pointing or talking and you see me wave at you, it means put the microphone back here so that we can make sure we're communicating to everybody throughout the district. Also, if we take any questions during the time that our presenters are up here, remember to repeat the question because our visitors that are watching at their desktops or at the other two campuses can't hear the question if we don't repeat it here into the microphone. Um, I want to make a special thank you as we always do to any of our board members who took the time to get here today and to be a part of this presentation and I want to thank board member Earl Mann for coming over today. Earl, thank you. And now without any further ado, we're excited Okay, maybe excited is a little strong. We're happy to be presenting to you what we think is one of the most important elements of this whole process that we've been engaged in. If you buy into the philosophy that we are really all about students and that the work that we do in the classroom is the front line where the rubber meets the road, then nothing's more important in this entire process than the student learning outcome portion of this. So the staff that are gonna be sharing with you today are a wonderful blend of administrators and faculty who have not only been working on this since last February when we started, but I know in the case of Dean Hollibaugh and Dean Ortecho, they spent countless hours this summer. So lots of time was invested not only in the student learning outcome portions of it for individual courses, but in the, in the program learning outcome portion of it for entire programs, and that'll make a little bit more sense today when the staff um, share with you. So I'm going to introduce them all, and then we're going to start it off with um, Jared Birch, but I want to, I want to recognize all of them because this has been a really critical element. And one of the things that I think, just being the, still the relative newcomer, that made the SLO portion um, so important and so challenging is that we had already started a lot of work in this area. And we had a, a fair amount of work already complete. So two things had to happen. We had to identify the work we had already complete and align it, acknowledge it first, and then align it with what we knew we had to do to get finished. And in some cases, it meant shifting our mindsets from previous work that we had done. And in some cases, it meant aligning the work we were doing next with what we already had finished. So it was a lot more complex than it looked like on the surface. And these folks were the professionals who put the time in to make sure that we did it right. So we have here co-presenting today Dean Hollibaugh and Dean Ortecho, who I mentioned, faculty members Joni Jordan, Jared Birch, and Marla Prochnow. And as we get started, I just want to give them all a big thank you for the work that they've done. And they have this organized in a specific order and they're gonna hand it off to each other one at a time as we go. But I'm handing the microphone off first to start, um, to start this to Jared Burr. So Jared, thank you. All right, Let's see if I can run one of these. They've asked me to begin by talking a little bit about where we were, all right? So this is back in fall of 2012. And uh, most of our courses had learning outcomes developed and entered into Cricunet at that stage. And most of our courses had at least one outcome that had been assessed and the results had been entered into TrackDAT. Um, Cricunet, I'm sorry, I'm already talking. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm so used to TrackDAT now that I can't even, uh, but yes, into Cricunet. Um, while there were pockets of progress in some divisions, there was not a, a district-wide emphasis or expectation uh, regarding both course and program outcomes and that they would be assessed on a regular, systematic basis. 
And those divisions that were doing work, uh, they couldn't effectively document their work. And uh, the work wasn't part of a, a meaningful process and a systematic process that the district could use uh, to make informed decisions. And that's really, I think, one of the, the big issues that we had was we didn't have that ability to make decisions based on the data that we were collecting with our, with our outcomes and assessment work. Uh, there wasn't a system in place. Uh, we couldn't demonstrate that we were having instructional improvement based on the ONA work that we were, that we were doing, though it was somewhat limited at that time. One place that we really lacked was in the program and in the institutional outcomes. All right, we, we, they were pretty much non-existent back in fall 2012. Um, we didn't have what are called jellos. Uh, I wanted to say that, so. Uh, general education outcomes. Um, and again, uh, it wasn't, we didn't have this, this system in place. We, there wasn't a cycle. And we've developed now on campus a, a cycle, but we didn't have a cycle uh, to do our assessment work. And there was nothing that was part of our integrated plan. The data that we did collect, that, that we did collect didn't seem to go anywhere. Right? And because of that, we lost a little bit of enthusiasm, I think, for it. Right? Uh, if we weren't going to use the data, why are we doing it? And so sometimes that was, I think, a cause of that. Um, Additionally, uh, with um, the, let's see, where was I? Oh, I've already done this assessment cycle. So outcome and assessment work effectively stalled along with a lot of other committee work in uh, spring of 2012. And one thing that at the time in 2012, I didn't even realize that it was important. And uh, that was that the outcomes weren't available to the students. And uh, we didn't have them in our syllabi necessarily. Um, they weren't listed in the catalog. They weren't in connection with our courses when students register um, in Banner. So uh, we have changed that. And I'll let, uh, I think, Marla take it from there. Thank you, sir. Uh, OK. Well, we've been busy. And uh, we've all been busy. So here's some of the things that we, um, some of our achievements starting in spring and, and continuing through the summer. And this is part of everybody's effort on campus because while we've been able to structurally put some things together in our subgroup, we couldn't actually perform all of the work that needed to take place. So um, we now have opportunities uh, in place for us to dialogue. We've got, uh, you know, formalized uh, opportunities and during convocation and dialogue days and we're excited to see how those um, you know how they uh, are implemented and how they'll improve over time we actually now have outcomes assessment as part of the planning model for decision making and so, and we can see where it is in the model uh, we know that our data will um, start to inform some of the district-wide decisions and uh, we have <laughs> a person that <laughs> we've hired to help us with research and, and with that research capacity. And so Dolly's just been a, a wonderful addition to uh, the COS family as far as research is concerned. And that was one area that we were really um, limited on and there was only so many times you could say, ask Ryan. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> apparently he needed some help. Uh, anyways, we also, uh, we spent some money. So we spent some time, but we also spent some money and some well-spent money. Um, we bought some software known as TrackDat. It turns out that it's really some of the most uh, advanced software. And I was excited about that because I thought, yay, CUS is finally spending money and getting us really good stuff. And so um, that has taken a little bit of time that uh, to, you know, design it and to implement it and have it do all the things we want to do and we want it to do everything now so I know we're putting in lots of requests for you know what else can track that do and can it keep track of this and that and the other thing and so um, we're getting our money's worth and I think we're wearing our track that team out a little bit but at least now our data has a home it has a place that it can be stored it can be reported it can be uh, retrieved and the like 
So all of that tracked out fun, um, we've all had a chance to experience that and have benefited from the, all the work that's gone into that and just the hours and hours of work um, in implementing track debt. So uh, we have a plan now. We have an assessment plan. We're on a three-year cycle, and uh, we're, uh, we started that work um, more thoughtfully in the spring. We're continuing it now in the fall, and now we look forward to you know, assigning those cycles to our courses and to our programs on into the years ahead. So. I'm sure I, you know, I've done, like I'm sure everyone else has done, you've assigned your outcomes for your courses and your programs out, you know, nine, you know, nine years out, right? Because you're looking at it in the next three years and then the three years after that. So, right, everyone's doing that, making their, just so looking forward to assessing those again. Um, we have, again, with the track dat and, and other ways, COS has put some money behind outcomes assessment. So, um, we are actually putting money where it needs to be spent. And um, again, the reporting feature, that's something that's um, in part of the TrackDAT software. And we are requesting more and more reports. So we gotta, we'll get organized on that, but we are, have the ability to report out of TrackDAT and people are coming up again with really creative reports that um, we're asking the team to put together. Um, it's, you know, it just helped in general with alignment, so we're starting to think more from the course to the program, the connection to the institution, uh, to the service areas, so there's an overall alignment now that we're appreciating with outcomes assessment. And then the Senate and the task force has approved an assessment cycle, so now we actually have a formalized three-year assessment cycle that um, people understand and um, can utilize. So those are some of the things that uh, we've been able to achieve in a very short period of time. Uh, the outcomes are available on the syllabi to students. They're also available through Banner and you know in the catalog. These are some at, at various stages, but um, completion stages of making the students aware of the outcomes. We may be talking about outcomes a little bit more in the classroom than we did before. I don't think we can talk about outcomes too much because students still don't quite understand, and it's just a language thing. They don't quite understand what we mean when we say student learning outcomes and how it applies to them. So um, that's just my little plug for any time you can remind them as you're going through the semester that this will support your student learning outcome, then it will help them to realize that there is a, a plan, there is a method to our madness. And uh, we also um, have uh, reached an agreement to pilot using uh, participation in outcomes assessment as part of our faculty evaluation, and that was a, a big uh, success as well. So lots of work started uh, mid-spring through the summer and beginning of fall. So we've made huge strides, but where are we headed? Where are we going to? And I'm going to pass it over to Joni now to tell us where we're headed. So there's a lot of ongoing action. Oh, here, huh? There's a lot of ongoing action um, for um, outcomes and assessment, as you can hear from all of this. And in addition to that, there are three action plans. So um, the first action plan is that we're going to ensure that outcome assessment are tied into our institutional plan. So as Jared mentioned in the first slide, one of the difficulties with outcomes assessment was that there wasn't a real purpose to, be, to do it. Nobody could see a good reason to do it other than, you know, just making somebody else feel good or mock, marking off a checkbox. But now it's really clear that there's some really good reasons to do it. It's going to um, figure into our resource allocation. It's going to figure into our college-wide planning processes. And of course, it figures into our ability to demonstrate that we're improving um, instruction and services on campus. Um, the next one is that we are going to have processes for evaluating the effectiveness of track dat. So um, the outcomes and assessment committee, the tech committee, and the 
um, research planning and institutional effectiveness groups will um, establish those groups. We're going to be working all year to continue to build out TRACDAT. And as Marla mentioned, everybody wants a piece of TRACDAT. We're trying to figure out how to put committee work into that and um, ways that we can track those processes now. Um, we will continue to build out mapping functions in TRACDAT. Um, there's a whole bunch of reports that we have uh, um, listed that people want to be able to have access to quickly. And um, at, by the end of the year, these groups will meet to determine whether or not, you know, TrackDAT is meeting our, um, our demands. And, it, you know, already it seems like it is. I'll have to say, um, as a person who trained people on Curriculet and is now training people on TrackDAT, um, I'm a lot more popular when I say TrackDAT than when I say Curriculet. So, um, <laughs> So it, it seems like it's a, it's a product that's working well for our campus. And then last, um, in order to institutionalize widespread college dialogue about assessment results, we're pl we have planned a, a dialogue day each semester, um, and we plan for that to be ongoing. This year it is October 25th and March 21st. Um, there's been some, f some feelers out there already about getting people prepared, and I know the division chairs are, are already working on this, um, but it's an, uh, it underscores the district's commitment, I think, to uh, outcomes and assessment work and allowing time and resources and energy for that work to, um, to come to fruition. So not only are people just filling out the forms and doing the kind of work and recording their information, but they're actually given time to get together and talk about what all of that means and work that into their action plans going forward. Um, and Dr. Lucerna wanted me to report, so it's for the record, that we're at 91% um, of having our course outcomes from spring semester assessed and in curriculum. So that is amazing news. The end. Oh, questions? Is that what we're asking? Questions yeah, we're. Are you going to do questions? So we've we've obviously done a lot of work. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of work done uh, for the TrackDat from the TrackDat team and from all of you that have entered it. I can't thank you enough for all of you that have actually entered data into the TrackDat system. Uh, it seems to be a lot more friendly than the CurricuNet system. Uh, we can get reports from here to next Sunday uh, about data in it. So if there's any questions on the TrackDat system or anything uh, that we can answer, except for Jennifer, um, we'll answer right now. I don't know if you could do this, but is it possible that you could put up, pull up the website, the outcomes and assessment website, to show us how we get there and how we could view people's outcomes? From the front page, from the front page, you go to um, scroll up, scroll up, go to accreditation status, to down to the left, under news and events. Up, big blue box. And then scroll down until you get to outcomes assessment. And there's two things here. There's a live version where it says course outcomes. So if you click on course outcomes, you'll get an interactive screen where you can select a discipline. So let's just select something, select one of those. And below that are all of the um, uh, course outcomes for whatever discipline that was. So can everybody figure out how to get there? Okay. The other thing that we have is we have program level outcomes. And they are not uh, interactive. 
However, all the program level outcomes are up there. It's a long way to the Kern building. Program outcomes, there you go. Um, accept. And there's all the um, program level outcomes. These, um, these will be entered into TrackDAT, have been entered into TrackDAT. Dr. Otecho is shaking his head in the affirmative. So what will happen is that that will be interactive just like the course level outcomes. Any other questions? Good. Thank you. Okay, that was way too easy. We got all the hard questions at the other forums, huh? Thank you. A um, couple of closing comments. Again, this is the last in the series of accreditation forums that we had scheduled specifically to provide the summer update and then to cover these show cause areas. Let me tell you again now, just one more time, kind of repetition is good, where we are with the show cause report. The unofficial draft of the majority of all the content is out in circulation now. If you've taken the time to take a peek, you'll recognize it's an over 300 page document. It is uh, in the process of going through final editing. So we don't want you, as you're reading it, we don't want you to worry about punctuation or spelling or sentence structure or formatting. We have that being done. We do want you to take a good look at content. And again, at this point in the process, because we gathered it all, remember, from the very beginning, right out of the grassroots of the Accreditation Response Task Force, and the core content came from the subgroup work that was done there. That was assembled into general chunks of information, which have now been compiled, organized, supplemented, um, enhanced, manipulated by the editing team to get where we are today. And they have done an absolutely fabulous job. The editing team really has represented College of the Sequoias in a way that I don't think uh, any of us expected, the amount of time, energy, and work that went into that. So what we're looking for now is if there are really errors of fact, if you come across something in one of the areas that's just not accurate, we need to know that, because we're not perfect. We may have made a mistake there or if there's an omission, some fact that you know is critical and important that was in earlier information that didn't make it in, we need to know that. Otherwise, we're giving you the opportunity to see it, peruse it, try to understand how this content is embedded in there now because you'll see it. You'll see how we've had to organize it. We have the eligibility criteria first. We have the response to the standards second, and then we close with wrapping it up with the recommendations. Um, we're gonna do the final, final edits now. It's going, that, that uh, first reading, if you will, of the show cause report was reviewed at District Governance Senate yesterday, and there will be time for discussion and review at Academic Senate today. And it'll remain in circulation um, for one more reading. As we get the information and the feedback back, we're gonna go down to the very final touches, which are gonna to be to take any of those errors of fact or omission, get those into this document, and do the final formatting. Uh, we plan to uh, send the document to print on uh, October the 7th, and that's gonna give us about a week of print time. While they're printing the 50 copies or so that we need, we're gonna grab the first 20 off the press and we're going to make sure that we overnight them to the ACCJC on Thursday, October the 10th. That gives us time to call on Friday and make sure they receive them. And if not, we're putting a stack in the car and we're driving them up over the weekend. But they will be there by Monday the 14th. They're due uh, you know, no later than the end of the business day on October the 15th. Our board, our COS Board of Trustees now has the same version that all of you have, so they're gonna have all of this time to familiarize their, themselves with that report as well. And they're gonna see the final dressed up, prettied up version uh, on their board agenda on October the 14th. But they will have had the same time to pre-read it that you're having right now. 
And that'll conclude the submission of the show cause report portion of the process. Then what we know is that the visiting team is going to be a small group of the original team who came to see us a year ago. Um, we don't have their names yet or their contact information that will come to us via letter from the ACCJC as soon as all those members have confirmed their participation. But we do know this, we think we have it nailed down now that the visiting team is going to be back on the campus at the College of the Sequoias November 12th and 13th. So there were some dates fluctuating back and forth. We, okay, okay, excuse me, it's down to, it's a two day visit now, November 13th and 14th. November 13th and 14th. I think that means a Wednesday and Thursday. So we wanted them to be here sometime during the middle of the week because we actually want them to see our governance in operation. We want to see councils meeting. We want them to see academic senate meeting. We want to be able to show them video of district governance senate that met the day before. We want them to see the, the work in operation. Okay, and then the, that visiting team will... Um, make their assessment of us and you know what they're coming to do they're coming to read our report and match what we're doing in reality with what we have written on paper and then they're going to write write up their findings and submit their findings to the commission the commission will take up our fate at their meeting in january normally those meetings are around january 10th 11th 12th and we will be there we will be there personally to represent our college they allow us five minutes at the podium to speak on behalf of cos before they review uh, our report and our findings at their table. We'll be there to use that five minutes. And then uh, we'll get our action letter back from them, we think around the uh, first or second week of February, which is the same time we fell under this last year. And we think that's gonna be uh, an exciting time. We're cautiously optimistic. We've done a ton of really, really good work. And remember what we're hoping for is that they extend our show cause period and give us the remainder of the year to show them that we're going to complete all of those cycles. And so we will have an opportunity to write one more report, I suspect, and then we're going to get our full uh, clean bill of health, if you will, following that. But um, we, feel, we feel very good about everything that's been done so far. You all have an opportunity to see that work now. We appreciate any, any final feedback or input that you'll give us. And, um, you know, at some point we're going to get, we're going to get uh, back to uh, the day-to-day -day work of College of the Sequoias, only we're going to be doing it in different ways now, ways that we feel excited about uh, in terms of how we've changed our structures and changed the foundation of our college and established a new culture for operation, one that we think is healthy and good and going to be successful for our future. Any other questions or comments? Senior managers, presenters, anything else for the good of the order? All right, this forum is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>